なんです<笑> This is the easiest feeling ever It's like okay It's like right on It looks like I can bite through Oh, you're gonna take it to go too? Come on guys What's up guys, my name is Miro, welcome to Spider Cafe, place for creepy crawly talk and micro photography. And today we're gonna be talking talking about something very exciting and that's predatory kdidids. And I got uh, my hands on a pair of red-eyed kdidids, Neobaratia spinosa. I had to look at my cheat sheet for that one. These guys come from southwest United States and northern Mexico. And they come from dry, uh, kind of deserty land with just like some small bushes. This is what I've been able to find out about them. They are very seasonal. They are basically only live for one season. I went on iNaturalist and I found out basically when people observe them and it's basically only until October and past October. Nobody really sees them and I think it starts somewhere around March. I decided that I'm gonna try to pair them up and since I haven't found many documented pairings in the hobby, uh, it could be one of the first ones or maybe even the first one. Basically the hard part is making sure that the eggs have and I have a plan for that because we live in Southern California which is very similar to where they come from and so I'm gonna just try to take those eggs and put them on a balcony and I hope that our climate is close enough to their climate that they just gonna successfully hatch and it takes about seven months for them to hatch so it takes a it takes a bit for a little insect like that I can give you guys full care sheet on red-eyed candidates but I can tell you basically what's been working for me until now and we're gonna divide this video into three categories first it's gonna be enclosures second it's gonna be food and water requirements and the third is gonna be behavior which basically is gonna cover everything that I haven't covered in this first two all right so let's start with enclosures When we first receive our candidates, I place them in these temporary enclosures. Temporary because this is just too small for them. And as you can see, the setup is really simple. Uh, basically something to climb on and drive substrate. For the breeding part, I decided to move them into the butterfly habitat. I placed the female into the butterfly habitat first. I wanted to make sure that she doesn't bite through the mesh. So I just wanted to observe her first and i was also waiting for the male to uh, make his mating call you can guys hear it here he's loud once he start making his mating calls i introduce him to the female they're living together in the butterfly habitat and the setup in the butterfly habitat is basically the same i have few twigs in there for them to climb on and i also have a water dish there so let's watch the unboxing real quick after this we're gonna do feeding which is definitely very entertaining no matter where you go always on my mind i could be alone never far from sight as far as we go through the darkest night i hope it brings you peace of mind i know we'll be all right Besides in the nature, I never really had to deal with these guys. And in the nature, all I would basically do is just try to keep my fingers away and take some pictures. Well, you're not making it easier on me, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Feels. Hey, Papas. It's time to explore. Wow, look at those antennas. You are a pretty boy, huh? You gonna go or are you gonna be stubborn? Hmm? 
Are you gonna be stubborn? Are you gonna be stubborn? Look, I'm touching your feet. I'm touching your feet. Are you gonna be stubborn, little monkey? You're gonna get cockroach if you come out. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can put him in like this. He's gonna climb on some of the moss. Yeah, yeah, there you go, that's it, that's what we want you to do. Nice, you are so well behaved, way better than your girlfriend. Way better. Let's talk about feeding, that's the exciting part. These katydids are predatory, so they are different than most katydids and they actually even feed on other katydids and they can even be cannibalistic. They can catch small geckos, they can catch frogs, they can basically overpower prey as big as themselves. Here I feed them with crickets and I feed them with dubia roaches. We got some footage, so let's watch that. She loves going for a stroll with her mouth full. Here you can really see that they need a little bit more space than what I gave them initially. It was fine for a couple of weeks for a quarantine and for them to get acclimated, but the butterfly habitat is working out much better. Soon after you'll be gone, no matter where you go, always on my mind. I could be alone, you never far from sight as far as we go. Through the darkest night, I hope it brings you peace of mind. I know we'll be alright, no matter where you go. Every time I feed the boy with scissors, he just grabs it and falls down. Never far from sight as far as we go. Through the darkest night, I hope it brings you peace of mind. I know we'll be alright now. Been trying to delay with the day's tale. Find myself locked up. I haven't seen the female eating since she laid the eggs, so I don't know if she's actually eating. I leave them some cockroaches there, but only the male keeps getting bigger, which is... I was hoping that she's gonna keep getting bigger.
What do you guys think? Pretty crazy feeling, huh? Yeah, so the food, food requirements are pretty simple. They basically, anything they can overpower, they'll grab onto it and they'll eat it. The water requirements, I missed sight of their uh, butterfly habitat and I also gave them a water dish just to make sure that they have enough water if they need it. Uh, next is gonna be behavior. These guys can be what uh, some people may call aggressive, but they more defensive than anything, basically. They assume defensive postures when threatened, and those look pretty impressive. They have little short wings that they kind of spread, and they raise their legs so that they look actually even bigger. I haven't experienced it yet. Uh, I'm not really trying to intentionally provoke them into this, but may, who knows, maybe one day I'll get lucky because it would make for a really cool picture. They will bite if you put them on your hand. I've seen some videos on YouTube guy letting them bite into his hand and his hand got pretty swollen so I wouldn't recommend it. As I said their lifespan is very short so I only have few months to breed them. I actually paired them up after maybe two or three weeks. I, uh, it was pretty successful because I only have about after 15 minutes uh, the male mounted the female and you can see the female was basically just hanging there by two of her legs and he was basically hanging on her. That lasted for about additional 15 minutes and the female would go on her own business and eventually I saw her for a few hours basically she was producing some eggs and I guess these were unwanted eggs and she would eat them so basically I watch her uh, munching on those eggs I apologize for the footage not being great because a lot of it is shot at night and a lot of it is shot through the plastic on the butterfly habitats on the enclosure I didn't want to disturb them because you know those are some precious moments day after I introduced the male and successfully pair them up the female started laying eggs and I expected that she's gonna lay it in a sandy kind of a substrate I gave her three choices I gave her sandy substrate I gave her sandy substrate mixed with topsoil and just the topsoil that was kind of a dry not bone dry but most of a dry she chose the topsoil substrate to lay her eggs in it which I was kind of surprised because on YouTube I saw her I saw them laying eggs in the sandy substrate so that's something you know something that happened here Obviously, due to their big mandibles, they can bite through their enclosure. This video will probably be published before these guys pass, so if they ever bite through the enclosure, I will guys let you know. Okay guys, wish me luck with those eggs, because this is the hardest part in the next 7 months, because that's how long it takes for the nymphs to hatch. These bugs are really awesome. If I get some more footage of them eating or doing anything interesting, I'll do update on them. If you're getting them and uh, they are still available right now, just know that they're not gonna be around for much longer, and if I'll get any of the best baby's hedge I will definitely make that update so far we have two t-shirt contest winners we have Dan from Chicago thank you so much Dan and thank you for your kind words and uh, Fabian from Uruguay thank you so much you are always first one to comment so thank you so much I really appreciate guys your support we still have one t-shirt left we can ship it worldwide guys so I know that solitude you commented and, uh, and you are from UK we can definitely ship you one to UK so it's no problem I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button hit the notifications button and hit the subscribe button thank you and I'll see you in the next one As far as we go and Through the darkest night I hope it brings you peace of mind I know we'll be alright No 